The following is a presentation of The Day. Sometimes the stage sets itself. The scene often reserved for a Hollywood blockbuster is brought to life. Two storied rivals, both immensely talented. Veteran coaches with winning backgrounds, one looking to make history. All under the banners on the wall of the iconic Conway Gymnasium. St. Bernard, off a dominant win at Waterford, knows it can play with the state's best. A challenging early season schedule has Mark Jones's Saints battle-tested and ready to claim its spot as team number one. Wheeler, Similian, Outlaw, Gray, and Marshall are a deep starting five, and they get a big test with the Whalers. New London, off to a fabulous start, has three super sophomores. Savon Warren, Deshaun Phillips, and Devin Williams are a talented trio, and New London has size speed, and hunger. A win over St. B's would be the win the Whalers need to cement their status. Oh, and it's for 500. Coach Craig Parker sits at 499 wins, and what a way to get 500 at home over the Saints. The memories of Harold Presley and Greg Hall are distant, but the rivalry is as good as ever. It's the Saints and the Whalers, history a win away, and it's all live on Game Day. Two storied rivals, an iconic gym, a raucous crowd, and a veritable who's who in attendance. It can only mean St. Bernard and New London. And it's all live for you on Game Day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized gentle care you deserve. So visit us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Casey O'Neill, along with the coach, Chris Giusti, and there's something about this rivalry that seems to resonate around the community. People talk about Paul and Presley in the 80s all the way till now. St. Bernard's in New London, and they're both good. Yeah, and it starts with the players on the floor in this day and age, in 2023. The players that we're going to see on both sides of the floor on, in both color jerseys tonight have really elevated their game through hard work, and they have become the new standard for high school basketball in Eastern Connecticut. Well, we said who's who, Troy McKelvin hugging us behind the scenes, Mikey Bassetto, CJ Parker, lots of faces in the crowd. Speaking of faces, let's go to our own George Hathaway. Thank you, Casey. This is an amazing atmosphere here in, in New London, Connecticut. A capacity here in the gym of 1,300, and that is to be expected. A lot at stake here. New London head coach Craig Parker searching for his 500th career victory. Devin Williams, a New London forward. He's playing against his former team, uh, St. Bernard's, and this is an amazing atmosphere we have today. Two teams that we could possibly see together down the road, and it's an amazing matchup here. Back to you, Casey. Thank you, George. And, and, and not... Not only is it the rivalry, but George mentioned it, and we're going to talk a lot about it tonight. Coach Craig Parker sitting on 499 wins. And Juice, you, you know, you were a wildly successful guy. Can you even fathom 500 wins? Yeah, I mean, and it, and it goes to, into, you know, how much dedication it takes to be a head coach. And it's all the hours you put in, just talking to one of the officials before the game, do you miss it? Uh, I miss maybe moments like this, but all the hours that you have to put in outside of the hour and a half that you get to play the game, that's what makes a coach longevity so impressive as Coach Parker's is. And we're going to see him go for a record tonight. Well, I can only imagine the outfit you would have broken out if you were coaching against him uh, you know, when he was looking for 500. You would have gone all out I know tonight you've got the beautiful celery I'm a big fan of the celery in honor of the whalers I appreciate that but I had a chance to talk with coach beforehand uh, and I don't even know if he's fully processed yet what 500 means it's uh in a day and age where coaching is harder than ever 
and staying in one place is harder than ever. To get 500 wins at a place like New London, uh, you know, he's on the Mount Rushmore of New London sports, hands down, 500 wins for this storied basketball program. Tonight's gonna have a lot of emotions for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, uh, St. Bernard's brings with it former uh, player Devin Williams for the Saints at New London. You know, Tyson Wheeler and, and Amir Gray are the sons of great Whalers past, and uh, there's a High Slope and a Lancaster, and all the names are here. But one of the names that is storied in New London history is the name Rob Sanders. And Rob Sanders was a fabulous basketball player here at New London High School, as dominant as they came. You can see him in, in the jersey of college. And Rob played with Tommy Poblete, and Tommy Poblete is gonna say some words to honor Rob. I, I just wanna thank New London administration. <laughs> Hold on guys, one second. I just wanna thank New London administration uh, for recognizing Rob Sanders. Uh, class of 2000 graduate um, who had an unbelievable basketball here at New London High School. Um, he accomplished so much on the court. He's often overlooked when we talk about great, great players, so I just wanted to give a brief CV, CV on all the things that Rob accomplished. Uh, Rob was a six-time AAU state champ who competed in five AAU national championships. He won two nutmeg gold medals. Here at New London High, he helped Coach Parker win 62 of his 499 victories. He was a two-time ECC regular season champ, two-time ECC tournament champ. His senior year, he broke the scoring record at New London High School, scoring 50 points in the game. He was the ECC tournament MVP, all-state player. At a time when there were five uh, full scholarship basketball players in the ECC, uh, three first-team All-State New Haven Register players, which has never been done before in the history of the ECC since then or before then. Rob was the day's All-Area uh, Player of the Year. He went on to go play for legendary coach Jerry Quinn and helped them win a NEPSAC AAA championship, which is the equivalent of a national prep championship today. He took his talents uh, to Providence College and played three seasons for the Friars where he led, uh, helped lead the team to an NIT berth and an NCAA tournament berth. He's one of three players to do that from New London High. Chris Dunn, Tyson Wheeler, and Rob Sanders. More, more importantly than that, Rob was an even better person. He was a great son, a great brother, a great uncle and friend. The most important thing in Rob's life was his family. He leaves behind a wife and three children. Uh, instead of doing a moment of silence for Rob, let's give one last round of applause. Go Whalers. Thank you, Tommy Pobleet. And he said it without a script, he said it without notes, and he rallied around one of the greats, Chris Dunn, Tyson Wheeler, and Rob Sanders. I mean, that is company uh, in the heavens, and sadly, Rob Sanders left us too soon. Uh, a tragic accident took his life, but a fitting a tribute to him here tonight. Let's meet all the players in tonight's game. Zuri Craig, KB Skills Academy. Deshaun Phillips, KB Skills Academy. Devin Williams, KB Skills Academy. Savon Warren, St. Augustine's. Xavier Good, KB Skills Academy. Marvel Flesian, Zoe Academy. Ryan Keefe, Nathan Hill Elementary. Jamel Hayslip, KB Skills Academy. Amir Hall, KB Skills Academy. Caleb McKella, Belly Family Cap. Calvin Sebastian, KB Skills Academy. Jameer Hall, Les Cats Elementary. Joshua Hickson, KB Skills Academy. Richard Taylor, KB Skills Academy. Cedric Samillion, The Trench City School. Shem Adams, Family Elementary. Ty Gujan, The St. James School. Amir Gray, Garfield Elementary. Colin O'Leary, SB Butler Elementary. Justin Allo, Where's the Funk Elementary. Tyson Wheeler, A.A. Ron Elementary. Alex Johnson, Wyndham Tech Elementary. Jack Philstein, RMS Elementary. Ryan Allo, AFRO Academy. Zane Bayton, Shamit Central School. Anthony DeMarco, The St. James School. Omari Marshall, RMS Elementary. Jacob Widener, DHW Elementary School. The Holy Club the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. 
Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The Lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait. Stop by the Holy Club, 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. some freshly squeezed juice. Let's find out what our guy, Chris Juicy has to say are the keys to tonight's game. They're brought to you by the Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut, located at 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Let's set the juice on the loose. For, for New London, select with care. Bad shots are like turnovers. Don't force things. Move the ball and find the open man. Close the windows. St. B's has a lot of shooters. Play tight perimeter D, close out hard and make jump shooters dribble. And hungry heart, win the 50-50 ball battle. Get extra chances with offensive rebounding, be the hungrier team. For St. Bernard's, front row seating. Keep the ball in front of you. Don't let New London drive to the basket or leak out in transition. Don't take a dance partner. Don't let the game become a one-on-one -on -one battle. Play within yourself and the team concept. And not you, Dev. Find Devin Williams on the perimeter. Don't let him get open three-point shots. As you see, the St. Bernard Saints starting five. It's the same starting five. Cedric Similian, Amir Gray, Tyson Wheeler, Ryan Outlaw, and Amari Marshall. Amari Marshall been battling some illness during the week, but he is back. Saints a little nicked up right now, but they are, as they would deem, excuse-free and ready to play. New London starting five to be announced now by the great, the uh, legendary Ed Wyant. Let's find out who the starting five for the Whalers are, but you know it's going to be a freshman and three sophomores. Youth is served here with the Whalers. Juice, talk about what it's like to have that kind of a young team. Well, I mean, first of all, they're fearless. I mean, they don't know uh, to fear anything. They've had success throughout their youth playing for rec leagues and, and their middle school teams. So the moment I don't think is going to be too big for them in that regard. They're all in this together. Um, and they're going against a team that has a lot of youth as well. So I think that that could serve them well at, in some areas. But there will be some points in the game where uh, caution and patience will be tested. And that's where the coaches are going to have to coach them up and get them to be patient with their shots. A bad shot, Casey is like a turnover against this St. Bernard's team. We saw the other night against Waterford. Waterford kind of kept it close at arm's length and then all of a sudden an eight point lead became 30 in the blink of an eye because that's how fast this St. team can score. Great crew tonight, Dan Henderson, Todd Morgan and Dave Cruz. Crowd is filtering in, it's ready to roll. The youth of New London, the experience of St. Bernard's. And I think for New London, two keys. Somebody not named Phillips, Williams, and Warren is going to have to play big tonight because the St. Bernard starting five can wear you out. There's no weakness in the five. So whether it's Josh Hickson, Richard Taylor in that center rotation or freshman Xavier Good, someone is going to have to step up tonight because you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like the Saints uh, and only get contributions. Now those contributions don't necessarily need to be points, but Xavier Good's gonna have to protect the basketball, right? Hickson and Taylor are gonna have to rebound and do the dirty work under the basket. But 
they're going to have to get. No, no one can disappear from that starting lineup tonight. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head that those contributions don't necessarily have to come in the form of getting baskets, but you have to be the hungrier team. New London to hang around and win this game. We got to say from our perspective here on the sideline, New London looks like the hungrier team tonight. Savon Warren will jump it up with Amari Marshall, two friends and teammates growing up. You want to know how you know it's a big game? Jim O'Neill's here tonight. He hired Coach Parker, former athletic director. He wanted to be here in case the 500th came about tonight. And if he shows up and it's not a Great Neck Country Club, it must be a big event. Saints win the tip. They'll have the first possession here in the red jersey. The dump down to Outlow, kick out to Wheeler for three. That's short and a weak side rebound taken by Warren. Wheeler doesn't miss those frequently, and that was a good open look. St. Burns man to man to start the game. They're gonna get a turnover as Phillips drove on Gray, and that's a good, that's a great matchup of two sophomores, Deshaun Phillips and Amir Gray. And the Saints love that man-to-man, -man, and they have been playing tough man-to-man. -man. It'll be interesting to see who New London tries to match up with in the man-to-man. -man. And New London, on the other hand, is gonna play zone here. Little 3-2 zone into a 2-3 now. Wheeler, long open three, back iron no good, and look at Hickson go up, get the rebound, but he turns it right over. Two turnovers for the Whalers in the early going. Two missed threes for Wheeler. Similian with a three instead, that's in and out, but Amari Marshall. Nice look to Gray for the first basket of the ball game. Offensive rebounding is gonna be critical in this game. Warren taking Gray off the dribble. She meets Marshall. Gray interrupted. And here's Good. That's what we talked about. He runs into his teammate, steps on the line. So New London's had three possessions and three turnovers. The Saints have had three possessions and three good shots. London man to man. Out low. Kicks it to Similian who spins. Nice look back to Outlaw. Finish at the basket. New London taking advantage. St. Brenner's taking advantage of the New London pursuit. They jump Devin Williams. Warren, long three. Back iron, no good. Hickson. Warren, left hand, no good. Hickson with a rebound, and he'll go to the line. And right there, there's the early work from Josh Hickson. We said he needed to be dirty under the boards. That's a possession where New London needed him badly. Yeah, and they needed that to kind of settle in here. New, New London kind of forcing some early long jump shots. Maybe not the exact shots that you draw up, but that's going to be what you're going to have to live with sometimes with a young team. But a good way to settle in is get an offensive rebound, draw a foul, get to the free throw line. And uh, if you make the free throws, that'll really settle you in. Yeah, Hickson's got to knock one down here. New London just needs to get on the board, break that early scoreless here, 4 nothing. One more for Hickson. And we're going to get a lane violation, and that's going to be an empty set for New London. So not what the Whalers have wanted here in the early going. They need to settle down. This looks like that New London is playing a mixture of man and zone, possibly a triangle and two here. Up ahead, ahead of the pack. Boo boo! For a thunderous two! And that's what happens when you turn the ball over. And I think that triangle and two of that junk defense there confused St. Bernard's just enough that they get the bad pass and an easy bucket. Marshall over the top of Warren. Warren stood his ground, but there's Outlow. And we saw Ryan Outlow against Waterford the other night just impose his will. When he is playing like that, this St. Bernard's team is so much different. They become a half-court force just as much as a transition team. You watch the feature on Ryan Outlow this week. That's what they want from him. They want him to be a little more physical, a little more imposing. Williams short, ball tipped, Elbow on the floor. Another rebound for Ryan. 
up ahead, Saints with numbers. Wheeler for three, no good. And we're gonna get a foul against St. Bernard's, but the athleticism both teams have, they almost, especially against this with the sophomores, they almost don't know what to do with their bodies. You can see Phillips and Williams and uh, you know and Warren almost out of sync with themselves. Marshall as well. The veterans for St. Bernard's, Similian and Wheeler, really settling down and Outlaw imposing his will. And if he does that, if he plays football, as Coach Jones said, uh, they are. Their identity is completely different. Harass, turnover. Williams lost it, Gray behind the back, Similian, and the scintillating one scores at the basket. And an early lead for the Saints, eight to two. We're gonna get a little delay game warning here. Saints with a little pressure. Whalers have a sub in the game. Richard Taylor has checked in, replacing Hicks in. There's that rotation. Warren, kick out, good for three. Good! Zay Good knocks down the triple. He did that possession, New London was able to get penetration into the middle. A good kick out three. Inside out threes are the best threes. Uh, Wheeler, great look to Gray, won't go, but a late foul call will send Amir Gray to the line to shoot two. Yeah, there's a lot of gaps here in this defense. New London is uh, leaving some wide open passing lanes through the middle. So they're gonna have to tighten that up. What makes St. Bernard's, in my opinion, Drew, so tough is that, and I talked about the depth of their starting five. They're gonna look at who defense, if you play man, they're gonna look at who defensively they get a mismatch with because Gray can beat you off the dribble, Samillion can beat you off the dribble, Marshall can beat a lot of his guys off the dribble, Outlaw can overpower guys. Wheeler, you know, is so savvy with the basketball. So if they play man, they're just gonna pick the guy that is the weak defender and go after him. Yeah. If you play zone, they've got two great shooters that can zone break and a guy that can penetrate. So I see junk defense being something more teams might try. Williams hangs and it can't go. Similian passes up the three, drives baseline, hangs. No good, but look at Marshall. Strong rebound and put back for the Saints. The difference so far has been on the boards, on the New London defensive end of the floor. St. Bernard's is the hungrier team, and we said that New London had to be hungrier on the boards in order to stay close. Warren pulls up just inside the three-point line, knocks it down. That almost feels like a wasted shot, six inches inside. St. Bernard's 6-0 with the second chance points, this is your point, Juice. First substitution for the Saints, Colin O'Leary checks in, he'll give Marshall a breather. Top. There goes O'Leary to Outlaw. Outlaw pulls up, foul line jumper and knocks it down. That's his spot and he loves it. He was knocking those down as a freshman at NFA. Ryan Outlaw coming into his own here, senior year at St. Bernard's. He's always been a vocal leader. Warren, high arcing three, no good. O'Leary with a strong box out and the rebound comes now to Wheeler. Gray has the mismatch on the bigger Taylor. Floater, no good. And Taylor turns it over to Similian, but he can't finish. But the Saints retain possession. Outlow now, turns it over. Williams though, one on three with Wheeler. Williams, no good. Warren can't get the rebound. Millions three no good, and right now things are a little hectic here at Conway. Gray with the beautiful hands, strips it from Warren, it'll stay Whaler ball. Yeah, I think both teams have so much athleticism, they let the other team off the hook when they settle for jump shots. I know they like to shoot them, but man, go to the rack. 
New London will reset, 12-7 here in the early going. Long three for Phillips, no good. Good can't get the rebound, Gray instead goes high. Samillion hangs in the air, no good there, no charge, no call. Here comes Zay Good in the other direction. Gray has the best hands around. And we get a block against Taylor, good call. He slid a little bit at the end. Yeah, the last couple possessions we did see that both teams trying to go to the rack. A little sloppy. Uh, the shot's not there. You got to land on two, kick it out, get a second, third drive. Don't always settle for that first drive. Wheeler with a screen. A little mismatch there. Wheeler, open look, corner, in, no good. Wheeler's with numbers, they're gonna run. Here comes Phillips at the basket. He's fouled by O'Leary. They're gonna wave it off here. It's gonna be a foul on the floor against Colin O'Leary. And Phillips will shoot two. Yeah, sloppy, sloppy first quarter. I think both coaches uh, are going to make some adjustments at the, at the quarter break here and try to settle their teams down. But I think New London's starting to go to the rack a little bit more. We'll get them more opportunities to get to the free throw line. And that will allow them to set up their defense. Two early fouls against Taylor. That's something to keep an eye on because they're not super deep size-wise. It's really Taylor and Hickson. So they need Taylor to be play meaningful minutes here to spell Hickson. Phillips knocks both of his down. Good hands by Good. They're pressuring Samillion when he has the ball. Gray with a long three, no good. Samillion comes out of the pack with it, and things are getting physical under the floor, and he on the floor, and he finds Marshall. Crowd didn't like that. A lot of physicality, a lot of bumping, but at the end of it all, a basket for the Saints. It gives them a five-point lead. Only two seconds left. Lennon gonna hold for the last shot here. Like to see Boo Boo getting it to the rim. Either try to shoot it himself or kick it out for an open shot. They're gonna try to take Wheeler off the dribble and I'll tell you what, Wheeler's been great this year playing on ball defense. Screen from Taylor, but Gray jumps it. Up ahead, Gray at the first quarter buzzer. Basket is good at the buzzer, Amir Gray. And the Saints with a seven point lead. Second quarter action coming up. You're watching Game Day Live. On the, the Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait. Stop by the Holy Club, 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Pave the way for your student's financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. The downside of bringing up Taylor to set the screen is it allowed Gray to jump Phillips with the steal and that basket, a big turnover, momentum change there. Whalers looking to cut it to five. Instead, they go down seven as we start the second quarter, but just sloppy first quarter. Yeah, and I, I don't think that uh, either team played to their strengths for the entire quarter, but the one thing that I think was the difference was St. Bernard stuck with their solid man-to-man -man defense, and the way Coach Jones coaches the defense against ball screens is so good. Those guys come out and what is called a high hedge or a high show, and they're so quick with their hands that oftentimes they get a steal off of that, and not only just stopping the penetration, they get a turnover. It acts as almost like a trap. I want to give credit to Tyson Wheeler. You know, a lot of teams picked on him last year and said whoever's got him on ball defense, he's gonna take him off the dribble. Wheeler has drastically improved 
his on-ball defense. He has, we've seen him. He took on Tony Williams of NFA. He took on, he took on uh, Jeremiah from hand. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe. tonight. He's going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And that man right there, Mark Jones, it's a credit to him. He was such a great guard himself, teaching how to play both good, solid on-ball defense and then that hedge from the teammates. It is very difficult to do dribble penetration against St. Bernard's. Yeah, now if I was New London, I wouldn't even set ball screens. They're just, they're so good at guarding the ball screens, I would clear out and try to just create penetration, and they just have to be patient. Don't have to force the first shot you see. Williams, behind the back, splits the defense, hangs, left hand, basket is good, and the foul. And there's that D will that we need the Whalers. If they're gonna win tonight, it's gonna be Williams getting to the basket, and there's the first one. And, and New London was so much more patient on that possession, and eventually, the athleticism of New London is going to get an open driving lane. It, it's very hard to keep all of these guys from getting to the rim for the entire possession if they're just a little bit more patient. Don't settle for the quick jump shot. Free throw no good. Warren tipped it. Samillion comes out with it, which means Saints are gonna have some numbers here. And Samillion's gonna get a touch foul, and that's probably a break for New London because they had an open layup on the other side to the Saints. Yeah, so quick in transition are the St. Bernard Saints. They don't hesitate after another team scores. They're just shot out of a rocket. Gray drives all the way to the basket on Taylor. No good, but there's Outlaw with the rebound. Similian's floater, no good. There's Marshall with the rebound. And finally, it's Samillion, and he's going to go to the line. So the Saints outworking the Whalers. Yeah, and this kind of mixture, what they call a junk defense, a triangle and two, it might be getting the third, fourth, fifth options to shoot it for St. Bernard's, which is part of the game plan. But you got to be able to rebound, or the defense doesn't matter. I don't know, so let me ask you, because you know I could sit here and give my opinion, but I've won absolutely zero high school basketball games. What would you play defensively? You know, it's, I can't, it's not a blanket statement because you know your personnel, but if you had the personnel, what would be the best defense against a team like St. Bernard's? If you had the personnel to run it? I think you have to start with man-to-man -man because of the shooters. And, and you gotta see if you can man up and Try to get them to force the mid-range shot. Right now, the mid-range shot in basketball is the hardest shot to make because kids either practice going to the bucket or shooting a three. Um, if that's not working, then some kind of zone that extends out, like a 3-2 zone or a 1-3-1 that extends out and that you can still get back and rebound. Underneath, Warren, after some chaos, gets the basket. And that's what they have to do. They have to create more chaos. Whatever they're doing now, they just gotta ratchet it up. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day what defense you're gonna play. You gotta play it hard, and you gotta create some deflections and some chaos. Outlaw is gonna get the double dribble. He had a nice spin, but when he put it to the floor the first time to execute the spin, it rendered him unable to put it to the floor the second time. I, I, I do think a miss uh, you know, a, an underused move. You remember that with that pivot play, right? You don't need to dribble the spin. Spin the first time, Kevin McHale style. Then when you put the ball to the floor, it's like you got, it feels like you're taking six steps. Williams, bad shot. That was not the shot the Whalers wanted. They got it to four. They needed a better look there. Yeah, and I just think that if you just, you know, take a look, get a little bit of real estate, drive, try to get a piece of the paint, kick it out, you'll get it back. You don't have to force that first shot. Let your teammates touch the ball. Dump down to Outlow. Kick back out to Marshall. And he goes to the floor, will get a travel as Amari Marshall slipped, went to the floor, turnover. Yeah, I mean, as, as good as St. Bernard's has looked, it's only a four point game and plenty of time left in this game. So New London has to settle it down, try to get a good shot here.
Phillips. Now, this is a smart decision. Pulls it out. Pulls up. Back iron, no good. Warren goes up and grabs the rebound. He pulls it right back up, no good. And look at out low. Strong, up to Gray. They're so quick in transition. Similian, that was blocked at the rim, but the tip by Marshall. The Saints are relentless. Yeah, they, just, they had three guys down the court to New London's two. And that's been the story of the game so far. The transition game has really hurt New London. A double and jump Williams, we're gonna get a foul. Outlow got a little over aggressive there, but once again, I'd, they're just so good at guarding the ball screen. Also, they have Devin working really hard. You know, I would look to try and create some screens off the ball for him. Get him open that way. Let Boo Boo handle the ball. But Cedric's been in his jersey uh, since about uh, 6.35 p.m. <laughs> they're gonna try to, here's a, their high screen. They wanna try to take advantage of Wheeler. Again, he's been so good. Now Williams drives, hangs, no good. Good defense, here comes Gray. Up ahead to Wheeler, back to Samillion. Oh, Tice, so nice. Timeout, Wheelers. The transition game is just lethal. We have a timeout on the floor. It is a 30 second timeout, so we will keep it here. The Whalers want to talk it over, but what a great play by Tyson Wheeler because Gray led him too far and Wheeler was in no man's land and he knew it instinctively that he just had to put it into a space and he did right to Similian to finish at the rim. Yeah, and talking to Coach Jones earlier in the season, he said these guys like each other and they play so unselfishly. They know that they might give it up this possession. They're going to get it knowing that I'm going to get mine. I got to give some. I'm going to get some. But we're in this together. And the way that they can stretch a lead from a handful of points to double digits in a blink of an eye is what makes them so dangerous. I mentioned the Saints being battle tested. They, they played Fitch, a good team. They played Prince Tech, a good team. They played NFA, a better team than I think their early record. And then they played Hand, a good team. And their losses to Richfield and Northwest Catholic, the, the Richfield loss, they're calling it the perfect storm. Uh, but that loss by one to uh, Northwest opened a lot of eyes. And they've been exclusively in man-to-man. -man. It's with Cedric playing a, a face guard, so he's not playing any help side. So if anybody else drives, like, on that one right there, Cedric will not help off of Devin. Xavier, good, got the roll. Out low, goes strong, finds Marshall, and we're gonna get a foul on Savon Warren. Marshall went up strong. They tipped it off to start the night, and the two leapers battled at the rim. That time Marshall gets the better of it, and he'll shoot two. And one of the things that you just have to be impressed with, it, not only the physical specimen that Ryan Outlaw is, but the fact that he plays off two feet. You hear it a lot. When guys play off two feet, very balanced, he uses his pump fakes well, and that cre just creates opportunities for his teammates because everybody's going at him, trying to swat his shot. He pump fakes, dishes it off. Easy deuce for Marshall. Free throw, knocked down. Eight point, St. Bernard's lead. Warren drives, left hand, no good, out low. Look how fast, here come the Saints. Similian at the rim for two. And they, like you said, Casey, they're, they're already, out low has the ball in his hands, and two Saints are across half court. Uh, that's trust in the fact that Ryan's gonna get that rebound. And in order for New London to counter that, they gotta get some people on the offensive glass. Because if Ryan Outlaw becomes a one-man wrecking ball in there, this game's gonna be 20 in a few more minutes. Phillips drives baseline, and we're gonna get a foul. I think Wheeler got him on the way up. 
You know, New London has had a decent early season schedule as well. They played East Lyme, NFA, a good win over Crosby, Water, and, and then, you know, Woodstock. Their one loss to Hill House, who's a ranked team in the state. I think this was the first time these two teams were going to find out, you know, how good the two best teams in the league are. And I think everyone kind of agreed that these were the two teams in the league. What, I'm, what I really think with St. Bernard's is uh, they don't know how good they can be, and they're still trying to figure out their identity. I think we just saw it. Tenacious defense and transition like crazy. That's this, what I see when I see St. Bernard's. Oh, Outlow finds Wheeler. What a beautiful cut and pass. I mean, I, I, Outlow's been the best player on the floor, in my opinion, in terms of both sides of the floor. Uh, he's just he's doing it on both ends and like I said to have that kind of guy in the middle this year that changes them and they're not just a perimeter oriented team Wheeler three no good no one boxes out Similian Warren ends up giving it to good there's numbers Phillips pulls up baseline no good and Marshall Similian's up ahead of everybody Little hesitation, and the scintillating one. Comley puts it in, the biggest lead of the night for St. Bernard's, it's 13, and another timeout for New London. It's a full, so we'll take a break for this timeout brought to you by the Burns Agency. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. Said he was the best player on the floor tonight. If he's going to make passes like that, he was also knocked down shots from the free throw line. He's had baskets underneath. He rebounded like crazy on, on both the offensive and defensive side of things. That St. Bernard student section is saying, Welcome, Ryan Outlow. <laughs> you are now officially a saint because that kind of work is that's a stat sheet filler. He's doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, New London's got to find a way to continue to get north-south dribbling to the basket, try to pick up fouls, get to the free throw line. Don't force these wild outside shots. And we have three seconds. So New London, too much standing around, looking to beat guys off the dribble. If that's your only offense, not really not much there. Yeah, St. Bernard's just too disciplined. You're going to have to... Kind of create some movement, with some screens. Oh, Amir Gray to Amari Marshall. And the Saints putting on a clinic. Zay Good finds Savon Warren. Little pull up on the baseline is good over Outlook. But just like that, in the other direction, the Saints want to push. Outlook. In, out, in, and out. <laughs> Williams on Outlow. Oh, D. Will. But just like that, here come the Saints. Wheeler kicks it back out. Gray for three. No good. Rebound Hickson, and the Whalers are in business right now. But a turnover by Good. Wheeler. Up ahead now, numbers, three for good. Got it! X marks the spot, a triple for the freshman. A little sloppy sequence there, and it gave New London some life here. If they could get a stop, especially going into halftime. Gray, the sophomore, good, the freshman. Saints looking for a final shot, eight-point lead here. 
near the end of the first half. Marshall drives, and he's going to be fouled by Warren, and they're going to give him two. Now, a couple things here. One, second foul on Warren. Two, point opportunity for the Saints, but with enough time that New London will have a final look. Yeah, I, we, hopefully at halftime, you know, the, coach, the New London coach is going to shore up this defense, but on that ball screen, nobody covered Marshall on the little pick and pop there, and he had a clear drive lane to the basket. You got to shore up that switch or get the help side up a little bit higher so that he doesn't have that open drive lane. Little things like this, I love this. Grudzian and Justin Outlow check in. Wheeler and Outlow out. Right, those eight seconds, no fouls on any Saints from the starting lineup. And these guys can pressure, here's Outlow. Marshall missed both. Williams drives. He's tied up by Samillion, and the possession arrow favors the Saints. 0.8 seconds remaining, and believe it or not, out of all that, no points got scored. Uh, but if the New London will get the ball in the second half, so the small victory is forcing that jump ball. Now the arrow will go their way to stop, start the second half. Not much there. Tipped out of bounds, and there's your buzzer. So that's going to get us to the end of the half. It's an eight-point Saints lead as the teams head into the locker room. Our own George Hathaway will have a moment here to talk with St. Bernard coach Mark Jones. Jones is giving some words to Tyson Wheeler. George, you've got coach Jones. Take it away. Thank you, guys. Coach, I mean, it's been a very hectic game kind of so far. What are you telling your players during these, like, timeouts? Oh, we just can't turn the ball over, get up good shots, and, uh, you know, try to make it difficult for Dev, man. He's a really good player. And, you know, he can score them in bunches. And you've been able to kind of st slow down and stop uh, Devin Williams and even Warren as well. What have you been kind of telling your guys? Well, we just got to be there when they catch it. I mean, like I said, Dev, he could have, you know, a half like that, but then he could also go for 20 in the second half. So we got to stay the course, make sure we're there on the catch, and just keep playing and competing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. Big first half for the Saints, an eight-point lead. Stay tuned at halftime for some ads and also the Philomena's features. Devin Williams, Ryan Outlaw, stay tuned for those. We're at halftime, eight-point Saint lead. You're watching Game Day Live on the Day.com. The Holy Club, the premier indoor golf facility and lounge in southeastern Connecticut. Featuring Foresight Sports Simulator technology, you can test your game on the greatest courses in the world. Want to improve your swing? Schedule a lesson with their on-site PGA Pro. Want to host an event? The Lounge offers the perfect setting to watch all the big games. Gift cards are available and make the perfect stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Don't wait. Stop by the Holy Club, 161 Water Street in downtown Norwich. Pay Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. Pave the way for your students' financial success with a MySci account from Scient Federal Credit Union. Open a high-yield MySci savings account today and help support a positive financial future for your student. Visit scientfcu.org to learn more. So we were supposed to be the fro bros because his hair was bigger than mine. He blow-dried it. He had the, I was like, yo, we might have something here. And then he played against NFA and he wasn't shooting well. He was like, yo, I lost my powers. I need to get the braids back. So, you know, he switched back to the braids from football. And it's like, I thought it was fine for football, but we agreed that he was going to wear it out big for basketball. And he just went behind my back and got to bring it up on me. You, you see him, you think he's the meanest out of all of us. But to be honest, he's definitely the nicest, most caring person in our family. You know, people pay him out as a villain. So it's like, you, want, you just want to see him like embrace that role because you like when Ryan gets angry, he gets angry. I really want him to embrace that role that people paid him out to be because when he's, when, he, when he's angry, he plays like a whole different beast. I just tell him to play football out there. I mean, 
I mean, I understand people who say the villain, but that that's not him. You know what I mean? He's too good of a kid to be a villain. You know what I mean? But he could play football out there because he's played that his whole life, you know, and just be physical and be mean. You know what I mean? So he's getting there, though, and you could see it coming. And it's my job to know what buttons to push to get him to get there. You know, so I've been trying to figure that out all year and, you know, working with Marcus and talking to him about it. You know, I, I changed these guys' diapers, you know, like they were they were my little brothers, you know, through and through. And, you know, it was plenty of times where mom and dad needed me to babysit. Mom and dad needed me to coach, needed me to parent in a way. So, you know, I'm very protective of all my siblings. Part of me is, is that villain side of me, just, you know, using that fuel to heighten your game and make you play better. So, you know, I tell these guys all the time, the fact that people are talking about you in the first place means you're doing something good. Do you think if you get Marcus to let, because his is starting to head mm -hmm. that way. Do you think if Marcus lets it go, then maybe we get Justin back in to the triplets? Hey, I already I already have my dad getting it for a little bit. So if I, Marcus, you know, he getting there a little bit. So if we get Marcus and then we get Justin, we might have a whole fro family. Ah, that's a hard decision. But if his gets like a certain height, I just feel like I got I to gotta commit to it and just embrace it. So you got it. I got you. At the day, we pride ourselves on giving our readers the best coverage of local high school sports. Whether in-depth stories, photos and video, or columns, our dedicated reporters are on the sidelines covering it all, providing you with the stats, analysis, and commentary you've grown to know and trust. Subscribe today at theday.com to receive full access to all our coverage. I think Dev is sort of unique. I think, I think so far he's been a unique player for us in terms of uh, scoring from the outside and just he has an uncanny ability when he drives to the basket to just to score in uh, you know, different, different ways. St. B's, I didn't really have the ball as much. Here, I get the ball way more. Uh, I can do a lot more, show what I can do more. Dev scores where you don't even realize he has, he's accumulated that many points. Williams for three, got it! Uh, at one point, uh, my wife, who was doing the book, came over to me and said he has 39, and I was like, I was stunned. I was stunned. I had no idea. Same thing the last game. I had no idea he had 28 points. So when a player can score in bunches and a lot of points and you don't even realize what he's doing, that means he's just taking, he's not forcing shots. He's being very efficient with the shots that he takes. Williams at the buzzer. Good if it goes. Got it! D will with a thrill at the I knew I was gonna fit in great with um like Boomer and Savant because we even played with each other since babies, so I already knew I'd be able to fit in with them. Even though I haven't played with them in a little bit, I knew he was gonna have the chemistry right after it. You know, we played in uh we played in multiple fall leagues, New Haven and Norwich, played in the summer league and uh you know there was there was a there was a good chemistry initially between the three of them, the dynamics between the three of them. So it's not like he was just coming into our program, you know, just playing like now with us. You know, they have multiple games under their belts. And uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been a good transition thus far. It's kind of a big rivalry now. It's probably one of the most hyped up games in the ECC. I'd say the most hyped up game in the ECC. And it's just, it's just gonna be a fun game playing against the guys I used to play against. It's just gonna be a great game. Battle, we're gonna be battling. Even though we got we guys off the court, but we're gonna be battling like we enemies on the court. Being part of a great community is so important. People helping and supporting others can be very uplifting and contagious. At Philomena's Restaurant, that's exactly what you get. It's the community hub for not just Waterford, but all of Southeastern Connecticut. Birthday parties, anniversary dinners, weddings, sports banquets, a drink with friends, and of course, charity events. Philomena's has been, is, and will always be there for the community. Celebrate and support Southeastern Connecticut at Philomena's. Philomena's, Utopia Plaza in Waterford. After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Ruthless. Scintillating. Welcome to Dudleyville. Shout out to the Red Sea, representing the Wildcats. It's butter. Boo, for two. 
no scoring over Warren. Everything's better with bacon. Tight, so nice. Viking Valley, ECC champs. Dog pound, state champs. Did someone say state champs? We got next. Nah, we're what's next. It's game day. I believe that there's moments that really like change your life. And the talent show is definitely one of those moments. I'm not alone in this world. Seems like everybody out there wants to have a chance to be The talent right. show basically legit like saved my life. Yeah, I would have probably been in jail or probably be dead. Put me back in my place, but I won't make it easy on them. I'm a um, traumatic brain injury survivor. I was addicted to alcohol, opiates, then it turned to heroin. It's very taboo to be gay or to be trans. And it's never been so clear that you got a place. Now show us your face and get up on that stage and let the world know. We're not looking for sympathy, that's not what we're doing. We're looking to prove a point that arts can heal. That space, that energy, that magic, that's already therapeutic in itself. And that's what this new London Talent Show does. It allows young people to rip off labels that people put on them and come out of their, their own box or their own fears. Look, know that you can do anything that you try to do with faith in the man above and power that's inside of you. Uh, they're trying to stop you, don't let them block you or lie to you. If you let them, then they're liable to silence you. We could have been the stereotype. We could have been those people and fit the mold. The true measure of a person is how they respond to the negative things, how they respond to tragedy. And this is our response. This place destroys fear, destroys it, and empowers young people. You know, in the early going, it looked like the Whalers might be able to run the floor. Phillips was dunking and the Whalers were in it, but coach, the transition of St. Bernard's has been stellar. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is their secret weapon. It's not, actually not so much of a secret. It's their primary weapon and um, you cannot allow them to get in transition and a bad jump shot often starts that transition. I think in the second half, New London has to do a better job of making sure they're getting to the rack, but they also might want to uh, designate someone that's going to get back in transition and not go to the offensive glass. We used to call that a fullback. You'd be the fullback when a shot goes up. You get back. Don't crash the glass so that St. Bernard's doesn't get these easy runouts. Well, it's, it's funny you say that because they have a fullback on St. Bernard's. His name is Ryan Outlow, and he's playing like a fullback. He has been rebounding underneath. He's been the key to that transition. The, like you said, the ball's out of his hands. Other than pressuring him when he gets the rebound, I, I don't know what else to do because they don't just leak one guy out. They leak out guys, and they're so good uh, creating those numbers. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's a combination of things that you said. You got to get better shots on offense. You can't let him just catch and go. And then you got to have somebody who understands. I, you know, someone. It's not going to be Savon Warren because he's rebounding. But it maybe that maybe Xavier Good or somebody who can play free safety a little bit and cover some ground because the Saints are just going to run you out of the gym. Yeah, it's, it starts with trying to be more aggressive on the offensive glass for New London. I think that's what number one they had to preach at halftime. You got to. Get your lunch pail. We got a scratch and claw. You know, even if you pick up a foul, going for an offensive rebound, at least it doesn't give them a run out. Um, and, and that's where it starts. And then, the, like you said, the second thing is making sure you sprint back, having one guy already back, and then everybody else sprinting back. Keep the ball in front of you. 
You, you almost want St. Bernard's to take threes to start the second half and then try to get a rebound. It's funny because I don't feel like the Saints have played well. Wheeler hasn't hit any threes. A Gray hasn't really been involved. I'm just like, I'm watching going, I don't feel like they're playing that great. And yet they have an eight point lead, really unthreatened. What's funny is everything's set up for New London tonight, right? It's, it's at home, under the banners. Coach Parker going for his 500th win. Tommy Poblete with a beautiful tribute to Rob Sanders after his untimely passing. But they forgot, St. Bernard's isn't gonna just go, hey guys, you know what? You can have this one. They're over there, and, and they were very clear at practice the other day. No, you're not, no, it's not gonna be us. Let's, let's look at who their next game is. Coach Parker, you can get your next your 500th next week because it's not going to be against us. So even though the you know we talk about the Hollywood setting is all there for New London, the players have to put it on the floor. And right now, they're just not matching the intensity, the hunger, or the execution that St. Bernard's has. And plan A for Mark Jones is working, and that is we're going to take Devin Williams away and somebody else beat us. And so that's what New London's got to figure out here to start the second half. And Williams has not had a freed up uh, jump shot three yet. They've had a, a guy on him at every time. Every basket he has had, he's had to work twice as hard for. Uh, the Whalers get to the basket, but I'm not seeing great shots. I don't see people crashing. I don't see kicks. They got to do a little more than that one-on-one -on -one basketball. And in first look, Warren goes strong, but that left hand is no good. And you can see, the, obviously, the message at halftime was to continue to attack the rack. Wheeler dumps down, out low on Hickson. That was good defense by Hickson. Wheeler has a turnover. Now Warren comes the other way. Watch out from Gray from behind. Williams, wild shot. He'll draw the foul on Similian. That'll get him to the line to shoot, too. Maybe a little bit of a bailout there. I don't think Williams was in a real position to score. But New London started the half in man-to-man. -man. And uh, that they have the athleticism to stay with the Saints. Now, do they have the technique? Do they have the knowledge yet? Well, we don't know that for sure because we didn't see a lot of straight man in the first half. But they definitely have the athletes to do it. Williams, Phillips, and Good can guard the, the Saints on the perimeter. What it's going to happen is Hickson and Warren. Warren's going to take... Marshall, because he's quicker, and Hickson's going to be left one-on-one -on -one with Outlow. That's going to be the matchup you're going to see them exploit. And here a turnover in the other direction. Wheeler zigged, Gray zagged, zoinks! Out of bounds, it goes. And the Whalers now with a chance to get to the closest they have been in quite some time. Yeah, as much as we've talked about how St. Bernard's has been doing what they want it to do, they're only up six, and there's a lot of time left. Warren was gonna take Marshall. They're gonna to continue to rotate, trying to get guys off the dribble. Here goes Boo Boo, no good. Hickson, up strong. Warren, and he's gonna to go to the line and shoot too. Savon Warren. And if I, if there's a guy that I think can has a level that he hasn't gotten to yet, we saw last year in the Waterford game, Savon Warren just decided he was gonna get every rebound in the gym. So I don't care where it is. Offensive, defensive, he just, I'm, and Waterford couldn't keep him off the glass. He just, he owned every board. I think that he has to play that way in the second half here. He has to want every rebound. Yeah, and I think he was maybe playing too much on the perimeter in the first half and the message at halftime, whether it came from his coaches or he just decided to do it himself, I'm going to get in there in the mix and, and get some rebounds myself. He can score 10 points a game, Ryan Outlow style, crashing on the offensive glass and going up with it, but he can't if he's on the perimeter. And I love the man-to-man -man now. I just love it. Hickson, great position on Outlaw with a steal. This is the game we thought we were going to see from the get-go. Our own Mike DeMauro says to me at the beginning, which team's going to come out of man first? And it was New London from the start, but now they're both playing the man-to-man, -man, and this is what we wanted to see. They're going to work Warren on a weave with Phillips. Phillips drives on Wheeler, hangs, boo-boo for two, and the Whalers are within three. Little pick and roll, screen and roll, and we're gonna get a timeout, Mark Jones. 
First time out the Saints have called in quite some time. That is a full timeout. So we're going to take a timeout for this one brought to you by the Burns Agency. You like it better? It's better than Burns. Much better. So much better than Burns. Ride insurance at the right price. You, you buy better than Burns. You buy better than Burns. You buy better. The Burns Agency can feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1930. So, you know, Phillips scoring at the basket, good scoring at the basket, a 10-0 run for New London, they're within three. You said they've got the talent to play the man-to-man, -man. can they have the execution? Mark Jones right now is drawing up something to test that execution. Yeah, but you're getting your players moving in a more natural fashion that they're used to. When you put them in some kind of zone defense, son, they're not accustomed to playing, it actually also affects their offense because they're not in the rhythm of the game. Now they're more in the rhythm of the game. They look more like the New London we saw in previous games. Outlow slides down and now back up top it goes to Gray. So Gray with good on him. There's Warren and Marshall, we expected that. Up top, Wheeler, he's got Williams. Marshall drives, the left hand no good. Oh, Samillion goes up, and Boo Boo's gotta get a body on him right there. That's Samillion outworking him. Lead back to five. The London's done a good job of not forcing Three-point shots here. Good for three, no good. Weak side rebound, Hickson diving on the floor. And it's gonna be Saints ball. Now this is not the premier game in the state, though it ranks right up there. The premier game in the state, East Catholic in Windsor. At the half, East Catholic 26-19 over Windsor. I had talked to the Windsor uh, you know, fan, uh, alumni, knows the coaching staff well. And he said, how good is East Catholic? And I said, you'll find out. <laughs> He goes, what do they do well? And I said, everything. I got the problem with them. There's nothing obvious. Wheeler for three. Boom. Tice knocks down the triple. Just like that, it's back to eight. Yeah, nicely designed play there on the weak side. After the pick and roll goes one way, they send Tyson the other way. Kickback pass, wide open for three. D. Will with a reverse. Up ahead, Saints running. New London gets a, does a nice job settling. It's also easier to get back in man because you just chase your guy that when he leaks. Yeah, so much better already this half. Now they just got to grind it out. They got to get stops. Good. And we're going to get a hold on Gray. Good tipped it away. Gray held good. And that wasn't good for Gray. But it was good for good, and it's now the Whalers ball. <laughs> yeah, and, and once again, like, New London just looks like a different team. They look more comfortable. They're not forcing shots as much. They're getting to the rim a lot more. You know, Cedric is still in Devin's jersey, but the Whalers aren't trying to force the ball to him. They're running this little three-man weave at the top, letting some, something materialize. Step back three for Phillips is no good, and there's Outlaw with a strong rebound. I like the weave, but I don't need the pull-up three. Not down six. Wheeler stutter steps, picks up his dribble. Outlow, little 12-footer, in and out, no good. On the floor it goes. Warren, and that's knocked away by Amari Marshall. And Hickson, slow to get up. Getting up wincing a little bit. And they need him, because Hickson is the guy that can match up with Ryan Outlow in this man-to-man. -man. I don't know if Taylor, if Taylor has the body type. Outlow might be a little too strong for Taylor. Yeah, Hickson has the hungry heart. That's what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Am I going to have to sing that song? Devin Williams. The fans love it. He loves it. A little shake and bake, and he knocks down the J. Oh, beautiful use of the jab step ball fake. And he can shoot. Turnover the other direction. A little reverse on Wheeler. 
Here comes Good. Hangs in the air. Can't finish. But Warren had a chance up ahead. Wheeler. What a look to Samillion. And the Saints run the floor. Phillips. Kick. Good for three. In and out. Danger zone right now. The Saints are so quick. Got to get a body on Amir Gray. London's done a much better job this half of getting back. Wheeler for three. Tice. Didn't match up with Tyson in transition. Missed assignment. Just like that, it's back to nine. And it starts with shot selection. Phillips drives, hangs, offensive foul as Wheeler takes the charge. The crowd doesn't like that one. And we're going to see Taylor check into the ball game for New London. Hickson will get a breather, so O'Leary checks into the game as well. So two things. Who's O'Leary going to guard? Will the Whalers attack him? Who's Taylor going to guard? And will the Saints attack him? Yeah, and that, I mean, that's one of the things about matching up in transition is sometimes the best shooter is dragging behind and you have to make sure you match up with him and you're not just watching the ball and that's what happened last possession. Amari Marshall went strong and Warren got the rebound. Foul on the floor. They're calling it an outlaw and he's not happy but it'll be Whaler basketball down nine. Although the score hasn't changed much, Casey, I do feel like the tempo and the tenor of the game has changed. It's a nine point lead, but I think New London feels like they can hang with St. Bernard's the way they're playing right now. Williams has O'Leary, that's what we were wondering. O'Leary does a great job though, gets it back to Warren. O'Leary working hard on Devin Williams. Warren picks up his dribble, now Williams. Jump, hangs, no good, there's Taylor, no good. Whalers. Good decision. Basket, good, and the foul. The freshman, Xavier Good, is great, and the Whalers get a little closer. Well, Good becomes great, Casey, when he shot fakes and takes it to the bucket. Don't settle for the three, young man. Get to the rack, get the three the old-fashioned way. Knock down your free throw here, get it to six. Two possession game, and no, but Taylor and O'Leary, beautiful hands. But there's Warren with a step through. Whaler's playing much more aggressive. Feels like they're throwing a lot of punches, not landing enough. But once again, the tenor, the tempo of the game, the feeling, you could just see it, the bounce in their step. They know they can hang with St. Bernard's. They gotta make shots. In basketball, you gotta make shots. That's what it comes down to at the end. Both teams playing six people right now, and Outlaw got a mismatch and went up over Warren. Yeah, they got a nice ball, block to block uh, screen there and got Outlaw open. Big man was able to finish. Yeah, timeout. Timeout called by New London. It's a 30 second timeout, so we will stay here. Again, you, I think you're right, it's nine, right? They get it to six, goes back to nine, but it feels different for sure. But I, you know, I feel like St. Bernard's right now is absorbing all of these punches and they're not landing, right? The Whalers right now, based on what I, doesn't it feel like it should be three? It does, it does. And it, it, I think it comes down to a couple things. Number one, they, they've missed a couple free throws here that they could have you know, cut into this lead. And also they settled, there were a couple possessions there in the middle of the third quarter where they settled for threes. And you take those away and you go to the rack instead. Maybe that's another two points. Make a couple free throws here or there. That's another two points. So yeah, it does come down to shot selection. Got to keep going to the rack. I wouldn't go away from that weave. I like the action it was creating. You just got to wait until that driving lane materializes. Good, the freshman. Williams, the sophomore, leading the London with 10. There goes nice Williams screen. all the way to the basket. Good high screen. He got the knife through for two. Oh man, Taylor just set a wall of a screen and that was off of the weave action again. And give Williams credit for knowing how to use that screen. Gray all the way to the basket, he had the mismatch also. Well right now what's evident, the new, and this is the youth of New London, the help side defense just isn't there. Warren, no good with the three, but Phillips 
Strong at the basket, no good, another tip. And he's on the line, and there's again, I feel like New London has gotten some offensive rebounds, and rather than go back up strong with them, they've kind of tried to tip or throw them back up. But also settling for the three in the first place, Casey. You know, yes. You just got to the rack. It remains nine. As crazy as it sounds, the Saints can go into end of the you know third uh, double digits. Great look to Marshall. But Warren goes up with him, and he gets called for the foul. Amari Marshall will shoot two. That's a play that subtly not many players in this area could make. He hung in the air for, what, 2.34 seconds, and that <laughs> allowed his body to get into a position where he was able to draw the foul. Most kids just catch it and go up, and that shot's in the third row. For the people that are watching, what they might not realize is those two guys are the two leapers on the team because it was a battle in the air. Marshall and hanging, Warren hanging, hanging, and who was going to sort of make, you know, either Warren was going to have to make some contact or Marshall was going to come down for that, you know, double dribble travel. And Marshall hung that extra millisecond. Makes both free throws. Lead is 11. Williams on O'Leary. Gonna get a foul on O'Leary, a little touch away from the basket, but up high. And that's like only the, we're gonna, the fourth quarter fouls are gonna come into play. And they're giving O'Leary the, the duty on Williams now. Give Cedric a little breather. Both teams only playing six tonight. We saw New London with a brief seventh. Williams hangs, no good. Out of the pack comes Samillion. Wheeler runs the floor. Wild reverse, Tice! Oh, so nice! Under 10 seconds. Here comes Good, hounded by Gray. All the way to the basket. Marshall says, get that shot out of here! One point one seconds left for the Whalers to get off a shot. Suddenly down 13. Warren, one dribble at the buzzer, and he's going to get a foul call. Warren's going to get the foul on Samillion, and he'll shoot three at the end of the quarter. And that was, that's a no-no there. You don't foul jump shooters. I know that Coach Jones preaches that. They were probably looking for a travel there. That might have thrown Cedric off a little bit. I think that's a long 1.1 seconds as well. And that had been the Achilles heel of the Whalers tonight. Those missed free throws. There's a chance to cut this to 10. Now it's going to be double digits above 10 heading in. Second one good. Will it be an 11 point deficit or a 12 point deficit? It's gonna be 12. Fourth quarter action coming on the other side. Saints up big, can the Whalers rally? You're watching Game Day Live on Day.com. After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. And check out all the great entertainment coming this winter at Foxwoods. Go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's the Foxwoods Resort Casino the wonder of it all. All that is good begins with a smile. At Waterford Dental Health, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you with the personalized, gentle care that you deserve. Contact us today. Visit us at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. He may be a shooter, but right there, Tyson Wheeler was a scorer, and he hung in the air on an improbable angle. 11 point lead for the Saints, which is an increase. I mean, it's hard to believe they increased their halftime lead by three. Yeah, and what we've talked, we talked about it in the third quarter. Missed opportunities for New London uh, at the free throw line. They kind of settled for some long shots, but also they played some good perimeter man to man defense. It's the help side D that they have to shore up when St. Burns is able to get to the basket start to drive to the basket. 
the secondary defender has to come guard the ball, and nobody is helping on that weak side. Right there. Similian with a beautiful look to O'Leary. O'Leary's given the Saints good minutes here, guarding Williams. We're gonna get a touch foul away from the basket on O'Leary. Oh, nope, they're gonna call that on Similian. That's gonna put Williams at the line. Whalers are in the bonus already. Yeah, and that's something that Coach Jones always worries about. His guys tend to reach a little bit. He says, guys, we're gonna get the steal. You don't have to reach. Just put good ball pressure on the ball handler. But and This is a chance for New London to make some hay. If they can continue to get fouls, you know, whether it's shooting or not, any, any foul right now is gonna pretty much give them two free throws. And that's a chance to make up some free points. You don't want to foul Williams. Those didn't touch the rim. Whalers need some stops. Saints playing beautifully tonight. Wheeler picks up his dribble, finds Gray. Wheeler, no good. Similian though finds O'Leary. Beautiful look to Gray who finishes at the rim. Once again, the offensive rebounding has given the Saints extra chances all night long and just when New London thinks they're gonna chip away, that breaks their back. Oh, getting physical underneath, we're gonna get a foul on Savon Warren. He and Gray got tied up. Thirteen point lead for the Saints with the basketball. They're going to extend pressure now. They got to make sure they keep the ball in front of them. Don't let the ball get thrown over their head. They're going to get good on Gray. Now the fouls inching up for New London as well. But a lot of trust the coaches have in these young players. They're going to let them play through this adversity. This is only going to make them better. They're going to learn from a lot of the mistakes they're making here, live in a game situation. So much different than making a mistake in practice. You don't want to reach 40 feet from the basket. Gray turns it over. Up ahead, Phillips throws it down, and the Whalers get the crowd going, but the Saints come right up ahead. Similian for three. Back iron, no good. Outlow tips it from Hickson. Wheeler, floater, look at Warren go up high. Warren, floater, no good. Hickson, he can't finish. And Phillips is going to get the foul called against him. Similian was working hard. The crowd does not like that one. Yeah, and another big difference has been the inability for New London to finish some of these chippies inside, and that'll, that'll once again come with more experience as well. The layup package and close to the basket finishing package has been much better for the Saints. Oh, uh, Wheeler off balance. And right back, Tice with the steal and the three-pointer. Oh, on the floor where his father knocked him down. Wheeler with a dagger to the Whalers. It's 16. Just like that. And right now, the Saints pulling out all the stops. Wheeler hangs reverse. Oh, almost. Good with an open three. Back iron. Gray. Wheeler running the floor. Puts the brakes on, Top Gun style. Good flew right by. New London still settling for three. That, that, that's what New St. Bernard's will do to you. They'll say, let's make it a three-point shooting game. And the other team can't shoot threes like they can. And then they get runouts. So they add eight points of layups in between their two threes. And all of a sudden, what was a 10-point game is 18. Tyson Wheeler with 17 points all in the last five seconds. He 
been the, he's been uh, everything that we thought he would be as a senior so far this season. He keeps getting better. As you alluded to, Casey, he's become a better defender. And I think his shot selection has gotten a lot better this year as well. He did three athletic things tonight that you don't that he didn't do last year. Getting to the basket and finishing in ways he couldn't last year. On ball defense like he couldn't. And then the steal and the step back three is something that he couldn't have done last year. He's improved dramatically. And now he's feeling it. Saints will take their time here now. They're in no hurry. And Warren tried to get tricky and lost that one out of bounds. And I think you're going to start to see the crowd thin out here and head to the exits. Four and a half minutes remaining in 18 point St. Bernard lead. London's got to dig in here, get a good defensive possession. Moments like this, you build character for the next game. Outlaw, pump fakes. Hickson did a nice job. Boo Boo can't get it to go, but he'll get the foul and he'll go to the line. But hard to the floor goes Phillips and Savon Warren, and Phillips slow to get up. Wheeler still down for the Saints. He's being looked at. While they're attending to him, we're going to take a quick timeout. 18 point Saints lead. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. agency can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 Tyson Wheeler is up and heading to the Saints bench after being attended to by the training staff. He was a little beat up coming into this game, and that hard floor, f hard fall to the floor did not help. Yeah, and this is where uh, the referees are critical not only to uh, the outcome of this game right now, but more importantly to the player safety. Uh, with the game kind of getting out of hand like this, ratcheting up the whistle, calling it a little bit tighter to discourage some of those wild plays that normally we wouldn't see players taking chances, trying to do if it was a tight game. You see them try to do a little bit more crazy stuff when the game might be out of hand. The referees need to keep player safety in mind right now. That that's I know that's what Coach Jones was talking to the refs about the, the worst thing that you want to get a win but you don't want to lose any of your players tonight one more for Phillips he gets them both a little pressure Marshall up to Gray a little double team Marshall though calmly pulls it back Nice dump down to Outlaw, and he's fouled from behind by Savon Warren, and Ryan Outlaw will shoot two. Once again, it's a little wrinkle that I think St. Bernard's has been able to add into their offense, the pick and roll with the big man. They not only have Marshall they can use, but now they have Outlaw they can use, so they become a half-court team when they have to be. Obviously, their, their strength is going to be transition and getting to the basket, kicking out for threes. But when they have to run offense, the ability to run that pick and roll and, and get a guy inside that can get fouled, get to the free throw line is, is just another weapon that teams are going to have to figure out when they try to game plan for stopping this Saints offense. One more for Outlaw. 
That's no good. Hickson with a rebound. And it'll turn over. Whalers not talking. Saints basketball. Chance to execute baseline out of bounds here and be London to defend the baseline out of bounds correctly. It's only January, nothing, nobody's gonna get a belt or a trophy or a crown tonight. So they're working on executing and finishing the game strong. A little reach, doesn't get there, Wheeler. Picks his dribble up now. Three and a half minutes remaining here. And see if the two teams can kind of settle back in. Samillion back on Williams. O'Leary came in and gave him a breather and said his tank is full now. He's ready to go back one on one. Williams drives no good. He'll be fouled and he'll go to the line. That foul on Samillion. That's his fourth personal foul. Yeah, a little push off there, a little frustration foul. Williams so quick. Once again, they didn't use the ball screen. St. Bernard's so good at defending the ball screen. Just going one-on-one -on -one there and letting Williams use his uh, athleticism. And a power outage. Add to the mix. And we're back. I don't even know what to say about that. So after all that, <laughs> athletic director Phil Orby is explaining what just happened. And Williams will be at the line. Now with a 16 point deficit and three and a half minutes remaining, it does not look like Coach Parker is heading towards win 500 tonight. How? And all of that was because someone leaned on the light switch. Not, be, not his 500th win, <laughs> but the power outage. So if you want to know who does he get the next chance against, well, how about a team that's undefeated? They got to they gotta go against Griswold here on Tuesday, I believe. So if you're looking for his 500th, it could come there, but it's going to have to be against an undefeated and very talented Griswold team. And well coached. One of the most underrated coaches in our league for, for the last two decades. Started at Woodstock Academy and has been at Griswold for over 10 years now. Rob Molesky. And I'm not afraid to say it, a very handsome man. <laughs> Was that because of the lack of hair on the top of his head? We like the bald look, Juice. <laughs> not everybody, you know. Oh, he's, he, Rob's a great coach and, you know, has, like you said, has been for a really long time. Uh, one of those guys where you look up and he's going to have a career when you look up at the end of it that's going to be very impressive and people are going to go, oh, that's right, because it's Griswold and it's sort of out of the way. But they got a good team. We saw them last year. We knew they were going to return all, all five starters. Suvenance is a good player. So is Merchant, the, the Strain brothers, the triplets, very talented. So we knew that team was going to be good, and they're undefeated. That's going to be a, you know, not an easy one for New London. But if Boo Boo Phillips... Plays like that, and the New London Athleticism steps up. They got a chance to end Griswold's undefeated streak and win 500 for Coach Park. Yeah, and I know, I know Coach Mo, and he was definitely a New London Whaler fan tonight because uh, he would have liked that bit of ceremony to take place before his Wolverines get down here. But we'll see what happens in these last 225. Timeout, St. Bernard. So we'll take a timeout. This one brought to you by the Burns Agency. You buy better, better first. Much better. So much better first. Ride insurance at the right price. You, you buy better first. You buy better first. You buy better. The Burns Agency can feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1930. 
a lot of Tyson Wheeler highlights tonight, but that's because every time he touches the basketball, he does something good, whether it's defense, steals, inside, outside. You know, I've said the name Tyson Wheeler in this gym an awful lot. Tonight, this Tyson Wheeler is playing basketball inspired by the name, his namesake. You know, Dad had an awful lot of great moments in this gym. Tonight is as good as I've seen Tyson play. And, and that's what makes this team so good. I thought in the first half, you know, Ryan Outlow looked like the best player on the floor, although Cedric Samillion totally locked uh, Devin Williams up. And then in this half, Tyson Wheeler looks like the best player on the floor. But the rest of the Saints are still playing great as well. So this is going to be a team to be reckoned with throughout the season in the ECC. Um, they did take those two non-conference losses, but a chance to go undefeated in the league uh, as the season moves on. Wheeler, baseline. Oh, one, two, buckle my shoe. Wheeler underneath for another basket. Just the mastery of the English with the spin off the backboard. Yeah, don't get him in a billiard room with, his, with the uh, knowledge of the English. So 139 remaining, and it's a 15-point lead. Just a kid who knows how to play the game. He's been playing it all his life and just enjoying his senior year. Doesn't it look, Casey, like this team just really enjoys being out there playing ball? They do. There's Wheeler with the steal. Blocked by Boo Boo Will and put back by Gray. So at the end of it all, it's a basket for the Saints. And Coach Jones told me today he's not worried about games like this because he knows that his team gets up for these kinds of games. It was the game like the Ridgefield game where you're on the bus for like three hours on a Saturday morning. Those are the games he worries about. He wasn't worried about his team tonight coming out and performing. Minute remaining. Big lead for the Saints. Now, Coach Jones said he had no doubts about their effort against Northwest. He said the Ridgefield was the perfect storm. Long bus ride, hostile crowd, disciplined team, week you know, weekend, a uh, couple of players who weren't feeling great. It was just a whole thing. Up ahead now, Wheeler, he'll take the air out of it here. And we're going to get a massive substitution coming in. So into the ball game for the Saints. Darian Robinson will check in. Ty Grudzin will check in. My guy, Jake Widener, will check in. Also checking into the ball game for the Saints. Let's check it. It's going to be number two, Shem Adams. And hard to believe, but a Philistine. A Philistine on the floor for the Saints. And if you know what that joke is, Jack Philistine. <laughs> uh, Grudson up ahead, it goes. Widener passes it up. We're down under 30 seconds remaining. Got to ask. Mr. Macrino, the head over at St. Bernard's, how does that work, letting a Philistine run amongst the Saints? And there's some balloons on the sideline. Happy birthday to oh, one, one right. of my favorite guys. Give Marcus him a shout-out. Give him a shout-out. Yeah, he, told, he told me I had to, but Juice, you got to give him uh, a shout-out. There'll be out. no Coach Juicy without Marcus Outlow. 27 and years young. Still looking good. Still looking like he could get out there and play. I have no doubt that he could. And, you know, we talked about... Ryan Outlow and what they want from him. They want him to play in the moment like that guy did. You know, Marcus was a football player who brought that mentality. He was a talented basketball player. But, I mean, he, football was his sport. He was a Division I football player. But when he stepped on the basketball court, you couldn't tell him he wasn't the best player on the floor. He certainly wanted to win more than anybody else. And he brought that mentality, and he did whatever it took. And that's what they want from Ryan, and I think we're starting to see it. Yeah, and... And that leadership is just part of the Outlaw DNA. Shem Adams knocks down the triple, and that puts the final touches on a resounding 69-51 win for the Saints. Not what the Whalers wanted tonight, trying to get Coach Parker's 500th, but Coach Jones absolutely has to be thrilled with the effort of his Saints. We, of course, will have our Foxwoods player of the game and Coach Jones as well with our own George Hathaway in a moment. But 
Juice, your thoughts on what you saw tonight from the Saints? Uh, it was a sloppy beginning for both teams, but I think the Saints had a plan coming in, and that was somebody on New London besides Williams is going to beat us. And that plan worked for most of the game. And on offense, St. Bernard's was able to do what they do well, get out in transition, because early in the game, Ryan Outlaw established himself inside getting the rebounds. And Coach Jones said to me earlier, having Ryan on the floor allows Amari to play more of, as a guard, play more freely on the perimeter. He doesn't have to saddle himself so much down low. And I thought that was the difference early. Uh, New London tried to make a push in the second half, but then we saw Tyson Wheeler say, uh, tonight I'm going to fill it up in the gym where my dad used to do it, and he looked fantastic. Yeah, the name Wheeler's been said an awful lot here in this gym. His number is on the wall as a professional, but tonight it was young Tyson and the Saints with a resounding victory. So our own George Hathaway has Coach Jones and the Foxwoods player of the game and a happy group of Saints. Thank you guys. Here I am with Foxwoods player of the game, Tyson Wheeler. Tyson, you literally shot lights out here tonight in New London. I mean, 16 second half points. I mean, what did you have to do to really kind of put your team in this position to win? Uh, I mean, we knew we had to come in and uh, show out. It's a big game. They talked about it all week. Even we had the Waterford game before, but we marked this game on the calendar because I think everybody knows why, but we just came in and had a lot of intensity in the second half. You guys certainly did. I mean, Coach called a quick timeout early in that third quarter. What did he kind of say to you guys to stop that momentum that Newland had? Uh, I mean, he always tells us we can't turn the ball over, and we did that today, and that really hurts us when we turn the ball over and they can get in transition because they're a good team too. But, you know, when we don't turn the ball over, we're hard to beat. So that's what it really came down to. Uh, you got your team here showing you some love. I mean, how much do these guys mean to you? Yeah, I love these guys, man. You know, we're a family here. You know, we had a lot of kids from New London, so we couldn't let them lose this game. So we just come out and have to show out every single game. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tyson. Now we're going to bring over Coach. I mean, yeah, come on over here, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> how big was this win for you guys tonight? Oh, that was big, man, because it's the next game on the schedule. And New London's a historical program, and we want to be, you know, where they are. So we had to come out and play hard and play together. Yeah, you guys certainly are at that same level. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys saw each other, you know, down the season, even in the ECC playoffs. So how are you guys going to prepare for that kind of game? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll worry <laughs> about that when we get there. But I'm just going to enjoy this one tonight. And, you know, the, our kids played their butts off. They did an unbelievable job on Devin, who's, you know, one of the best players in this area, as long as Cedric and Tyson and Ryan and our whole starting five, Amari and Amir. All right, so you guys good now? Yeah. Anybody else he wants to add? <laughs> you know, but they, play, they played their butts off, and, you know, they really stuck to the game plan tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach, and congratulations on the big win here tonight, guys. Yay! A happy group of Saints, Coach. Parker's going to have to wait one more game at least for that 500th. Again, we mentioned Griswold coming in here next week. Uh, for here, us on game day, we'll be at East Lime on Monday for, you know, over the past decade, I would say the premier rivalry in the league has been Waterford and East Lime, and throw records out the door, those two teams will be ready to go Monday at East Lime. So that's our next game here on game day. But um, just talk a little bit overall about tonight. Uh, you know, it was a very emotional night from the early, you know, the uh, ceremony for Rob Sanders, the 500th potential win for Coach Parker. But at the end of it all, it was St. Bernard's execution that really won it over. Yeah, and, and, and hats off to Coach Jones. As he said, they, they put in a game plan and they executed it. Great job. They executed it tonight, and you know, that's part of building for a season. Getting your team to buy in to the game plan. Because everybody knows that you got talent, but the other team's gonna have talent too. I'm gonna cut you off just for a second. <laughs> so people watching that, it was Cedric Similian and then Ryan Outlow coming over uh, to give some love to, the, to us here on game day. Uh, we've seen a lot of St. Bernard's. Uh, we've, they've been featured a few times. We're going to see them again later on this year against uh, Wyndham. You know, the Saints played that early season schedule 
uh, up through this game, this was the this was the benchmark where they said now the schedule gets a little more routine, right? They've played Fitch, they played their Prince Tech, Hand, Ridgefield, Northwest, New London, and now settling into the ECC schedule where, quite frankly, they should have a much easier time of it. It's not going to be till later in the season where they have a couple more tests. So uh, the Saints have done what they want at 6-2 and two through those first eight and now get to kind of cruise. New London, you know, they've lost to Hill House and they've lost to St. Bernard's. Nothing with e wrong with either of those two losses. I think Griswold's a huge game in that. That's a very good team that they should beat. And I say they should beat because it's a Division II team. They're put down to a Division IV game. That's the kind of game New London should win. But it's not going to happen if they don't play really good basketball because that team's also going to come in prepared. But New London, you know, will settle into their ECC schedule as well. And I do think that these are two teams that we very might, very well might see again in an ECC championship. And, and that's just going to be, uh, you know, good for everybody. But... Uh, this gym is special, this, this place is special, this rivalry is special, uh, and even though it was not a competitive game late, I think it didn't disappoint from an emotional standpoint tonight. Yeah, and I think, you know, for St. Bernard's, they're going to look in the mirror whenever it is, tonight, tomorrow, the next day, and they're going to say, this is the only opponent we have remaining on our regular season schedule. Like, we're, we're only going to stop ourselves. For New London, I think it's an opportunity to regroup and say, we got to do a lot of things better, and it starts in practice tomorrow, and it's January 6th, and there's a lot of season left. We're closer right now to the state football championship than we are to the state basketball championship. So there's a lot of time left to get better. I mean, yeah, I mean, basketball championships are won in March. We're not even in the middle of January yet. We've got all of January, all of February. But you play these, you play this first three weeks to cruise, I don't want to say cruise, but to cruise through the next three weeks where the games mean a little less and they are a little more, allows you to do things. For example, St. Bernard's is going to have to find a way to incorporate uh, Alex Johnson as he comes off of uh, his transfer you know, minimum sit-out games. They're, they, you know, Jack Philistine's going to get time. Ty Grudzian's going to get time. Justin Outlaw's going to get time. Jonah Eddy's going to get time. He's going to have to figure out what his team wants to look like. This is the stretch where he gets to start to do that. They're not getting time in the New London game or the Northwest game, but those minutes are going to have to come for them. For New London, they're going to have to figure out who man seven and eight are, right? We know that, we know that they're going to give some time to Hickson and Taylor rotating, but they got to figure out who, the, you know, who players seven and eight are because you have to have a little bit more of a rotation. So that's what happens over the next few weeks. You know, we start to see what teams become. And then we have a lot, when we have all the fun down the stretch where we get to see, you know, teams at their best going at each other. And so we'll have all of that for you. But the next one, Monday night, Addy Slime, the Waterford Lancers at Viking Valley. We'll have it all for you here on game day for the coach, Chris Juicy, Mike DeMauro, and everybody here at game day. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good night, everybody.